I'm going to give this another go. It's trick or treat or night, and I forgot. <laughs> you can tell that uh, this pandemic isn't affecting where we're living. Nobody's uh, going around in uh, masks. They're in Halloween, their their faces are painted up. It's good to see the kids out in groups, mingling as kids should. But anyway, uh, tonight, this evening, I wanted to talk about. Pete Evans and Max Egan and the specific experiences I've had with this guy I knew as Pete uh, from when I was at the community at Ganyawe back 2014-2015. Uh, so uh, it was around Christmas New Year's time and uh, there was this girl that showed up she was engaged at one time to one of the oops i've got trick-or-treaters hang on sorry about that that's the sixth one <laughs> okay so back to pete evans um i didn't know miss pete evans uh, this uh, girl joe came into the community where i was and as i said she was engaged to the uh, guy dan who's uh, one of the ones running it and she was an international world-class chef and uh, she did a fair bit of cooking while she was there and I wasn't too impressed by her international world standard neither were the kids that were there either but um, because she was there uh, another guy came around a few times this guy called Pete really tall guy um, looked exactly like this guy here and he was also an international chef celebrity and I thought well you know I only knew that afterwards because the guy that he was talking to there um, came and said afterwards oh you know that he's he's famous and it's like no <laughs> and it's like well see this very tall guy that uh, you know he um, it is him this guy Pete this international celebrity chef that came round to gun a few times while uh, Joe the other international chef supposedly well known although I've got no idea who Joe is supposed to be famous as I found out who Pete's supposed to be famous as <laughs> but Joe no I don't have any idea who she is. Uh, this guy down here, this Pete Evans, I've never met. This guy here, I most definitely have. I've met him twice back in 2014, 2015. And he came round and he did what he's doing there. Sitting there talking and, you know, just conversing about his beliefs and how he thinks that he's got everything figured out and how it should all work and what he's going to try and and people lap it up around him uh, I didn't actually sit down and listen to him there were a lot of people that came into the community that I didn't really pay that much attention to because there's only so much of the same thing that you can listen to you know it's all right you've got all the theory now let's see the practice it was all this talk, 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 but no doing. And it kind of gets a little bit old listening to people repeat it. It's like, yeah, let's sit down and talk about doing stuff instead of doing it. I'd already been there for several months at this stage and uh, yeah, getting them motivated to do anything, to even agree, yes, well... That's a different story. This one's about Pete Evans. So I definitely know that he was in um, the uh, Northern Rivers area. And from the times that he did come round and visit, it was just after uh, Christmas New Year. Uh, he and Joe and Dan were going over to festivals at Byron. Dan had a little coffee van. He does the coffee van. Joe was doing the food. And I don't know what Pete was doing over there, but he was going over there too. So 
Um, this is all around the beginning of 2015. And so by the understanding of what went on then, uh, Pete Evans, or this Pete that I met, when I was told he was, you know, a celebrity and all that, he said, oh, yeah, he lives just up the road. Now, you know, anyone in Australia knows that if you say just up the road, that could quite literally mean just up the road, or it could be 20 k's, or it could be 100 k's. But the intended meaning behind it is they're not far away. So I actually believed that he lived fairly close in the area, and not too close, but uh, close enough. And then uh, there was the link that I was given yesterday about his Im apparent buying uh, of the Mount Warning Forest Hideaway that he's actually bought into that. Now you see I've had, um, I've even asked both my kids, grown up kids now, uh, do you remember? And they go, oh mum don't ask me do you remember because their perspective was more on the kids' side of it back then, not the adults. They were boring, you know. So basically, I'm asking them to validate, look, I remember him, I know it's him, can you confirm it? And, well, I'm not going to be able to get them to confirm it because neither of them paid any attention to him at all when he was there. So you can't get them to remember something that they never paid attention to. But I know it was him. This is the tall Pete Evans, the same voice, the same, uh, very tall, skinny. Uh, maybe it was his paleo way that he was just starting because uh, I found out that was back in 2014 when he started up his paleo way. And maybe that's why I switched off too because um, this Joe that was in the community or came into the community she was a vegan and there, this is where I have never met so much uh, food prejudices. Like kids are pretty much not vegans. They want to eat anything and everything. They want to explore all the tastes and flavours. Now this Joe cooked up something and she said, you know, it was for the festival, don't go near it. The kids wouldn't go near it. I mean, she did give them a taste you know, so that here you can have this little bit and don't go near and touch any more. Well, they wouldn't even eat the teaser taste they gave it. It was, well, in their opinion, disgusting. I never even tried it because I looked at it. It looked like slabs of boot leather and I thought, no, I'm not even going to try and chew my way through that. What is it, some weird form of vegan jerky or something? I don't know. So... She had cooked up this meal one evening for the kids that was against her principles of veganism and she used dairy and the forbidden meat. And then after she served the kids up, she went and sat right next to them and proceeded to preach to them about their food choices and how what they are eating is causing toxicity to their body and everything. Now... Here's a woman, a young girl, that has never had kids. And uh, I've got two teenage kids that, oh, you can preach as much as you want, girl, but you know what? Other human beings have got their own ideas. But I was more disgusted with the food prejudice that was put on these kids. It was not only mine, there were three other kids there as well that complained to me afterwards that they couldn't even enjoy what they were eating because she was sitting there trying to make them feel guilty about eating it after she'd prepared it for them. So these uh, food diets and food preferences and food judgments are um, kind of an integral part of this very, um, I don't know, extremist view and it's not surprising that Pete went on to start his paleo way. Now this one here where he's promoting the off-grid living in with no power and running water, you look at a picture of his wife and you wonder how she ever going to make it a day through without power or water. 
or even access to regular visits to uh, other kinds of clinics to maintain that um, rather artificial face look. But, uh, you know, here we are in August 2020. We've got um, all the controversies caused over that. I'm not going to get into the other controversies caused because good on him. It should be bought out. This stuff, though, promoting it. And, um, yes, the uh, he's lost now here. Two months later, his paleo way has gone under. So here he is in August promoting something that, um, well, and the reason I'm doing it on Pete Evans and Max Egan is because both of these individuals, I know for a fact, have had both strangers and friends of them contact them and advise them of what's going on there at the nightcap on Minjimbal. I know that both of them have received more documentation, evidence and documentation than what I have received and they still do nothing. So I'm telling you all this now because Pete Evans and Max Egan are fully aware of what's been going on and they choose after multiple attempts to remain silent after promoting it and encouraging people with Pete and his you know 1.5 million subscribers how many of those have ended up going to invest in this community likewise with Max Egan and all his off-gridders and uh, surviving the matrix believers how many of them have bought in and not at the full value that they're promoting, 285000 but at a holding value to, you know, I'll take your one or 2000 How many of those could they have taken to actually secure your place? You know, the promissory deposit that you make. This is something that both Pete Evans and Max Egan have been made aware of of the activities of Adrian Brennock, a bankrupt. I mean, he's he's promoting off-the-grid living community. He's, <laughs> two months later, his paleo way's gone under. Now what's going to be the next headline? Another failure of Pete Evans as bankrupt developer Adrian Brennock is publicly exposed. I mean, that's a headline, and that is the truth. Adrian Brennock is a bankrupt. The main person driving this development is a bankrupt. Pete Evans cannot escape that fact, and neither can any of the others. Pete Evans has bought into a development run by a bankrupt man. That is a fact. So how is he going to spin this one? I didn't know. I lost mi over a million dollars, but I won't tell you how many millions all the total users lost. What's going to be the next headline for Pete Evans? Will there be a place he can hide? Like any of them that have given aid and comfort by ignoring the evidence, actual documented evidence. The evidence that I've been bringing out to people is the same evidence that they've been getting on a USB stick handed to them by somebody that they should know and trust very well. Both Pete Evans and Max Egan, I know this for a fact, have done nothing and have not informed people. So this has occurred over the last couple of weeks behind the scenes. A lot of activity has been going on. Uh, people have been given the opportunity to speak for themselves and to remove themselves from that situation. 
given the chance, look, here's the information, take a good look at it, and now make a judgment call, because if you don't make the right judgment call, you're going to be going down with the bankrupt developer. You either are with him or not. So after all the evidence that has been brought forward to both these individuals, they continue to say nothing. So that's my little thing on Pete Evans and how I know him. I don't know him as this guy. <laughs> Never knew him as that guy. I knew him as this. And my first impression of him is probably why I remembered him. He stood out um, as, I suppose, uh, well, I won't say that. <laughs> I'll keep my first impressions to myself right here. So let's look at Max Egan. I didn't want him to think I'd forgotten about him. I haven't checked up on him in a couple of days, seen what he's been doing. He's uh, got a pretty regular pattern now anyway. He's modified of it from pretty much daily to every two to three days. And I don't need to listen to the videos because he's pretty much saying the same stuff everyone and it's that's where I go through the comments and I see uh, people what they've said and if they it was something that somebody said that got my attention where um, where is it hang on not that one Oh, Max, that feeling like you're under attack for two weeks coincides with the peacocks leaving. Just something to consider, but I really hope you are feeling better soon, my friend. Take care. And I mean, that was kind of like, oh, okay, I've got to hear that. Why does he reckon he's been under attack for the last two weeks? Because I have this feeling, you see, knowing that both what um, Pete Evans and Max Egan have been presented with by multiple people that uh, they would have a lot of um, considering to do. And uh, yes, it may feel like they're under attack. At least uh, their strongly held beliefs are, put it that way. And uh, then I thought last night, before I even um, looked at this today, you know, I should check out Max tomorrow because I reckon that he's going to do a oh, I've had a targeted attack and a beam of light and the things that I've said I didn't mean and all of that. And it's like, yeah, I can almost feel he's leading up to it. So, of course, when I saw this comment, you're under attack for two weeks, I'm thinking, ah, he's laying the groundwork for another targeted individual attack. So, just let me... I'll Fuck all you people. You. You're a bunch of fucking criminals. And we're not going to do what you say. It's as simple as that. You know, get a backbone, folks. Get a backbone. Stand up for yourself. Stand up for your children because the world is changing. And if we don't stop it, it's going to change into what they want. And the only way we can stop it is by refusing to comply with it and by speaking out about it in every opportunity that we can and by, like I said, showing these people the contempt that they deserve. You know, fuck these people. Honestly, fuck them. They're not even people. But anyway, folks, short report today. I'm not feeling the best, to be honest. I'm not feeling that well. I've been feeling kind of unwell for the last couple of weeks. <coughs> Look out, folks, COVID. But no, it's not COVID. I've, I've, I feel like I'm under an attack. I feel like I'm under some sort of an electromagnetic attack. I've been feeling it for about 10 or... 12 days now, I feel pressure on my body, pressure on my head. It doesn't feel normal. I just don't feel right. So who knows what's happening, folks? Maybe I'm going to exit the realm soon. Call it a premonition. But, you know, I don't know what to say to people, you know, when people are looking for a solution, but they're looking for a solution. All right, I'm going to leave that there. You just 
heard what Max had to say about he feels under pressure of you know for all this that and the other and it's you heard him explain it for himself and this is what I'd been anticipating he may actually try and come out with in that oh I'm a targeted individual you know watch him put out a video where oh you know it's all these people are making it about them and the flat earth and everything and it's not, it's about a man that had his personality flipped, you know. It's all about me, Max Egan. And all his mates that rallied round to support this targeted individual narrative that is, I'm sorry, it's a load of shit. It is a total, utter load of shit. And, of course, um, I look at it as that what Max Egan is actually feeling heavy under is a guilty conscience. Yes, his guilty conscience with all that evidence that has been given to him from people, from multiple sources, hard copy documents, evidence. Yes, very heavy. But it's not under attack unless you call finding out the truth under attack. Now, I thought he was a truther. And the truther that is actually participating in the truther telethon, which by my reckoning he will be appearing in that uh, at around 8, 9 a.m. Sunday morning, because all of those... Uh, Truth the telethon and the 44 participating in it, Max Egan is the very last speaker. Let's see if Mr. Max Egan is going to tell her the truth in the truth telethon. <laughs> Can he handle the weight of keeping all that evidence quiet? Or is he going to come out and tell the people the hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, this he had nearly a quarter of a million subscribers on YouTube before that was shut down. He's got at least 34,000. And through the events that have been happening in Melbourne, he's been uh, linking up with lots of groups now to do with, um, what is it, that Phanos... Uh, Dave Onigs and all those others that seem to be all coming together into one truther movement kind of coming out type thing. Anyway, I didn't say that very well, but hang on. So the reason I made these uh, this page so big was that hopefully you might be able to read these comments rather than me read them out because um, these are pretty much challenges to Max over the um, fact that he has been given evidence and he needs to start doing something about that instead of, oh, I'm going to stick my head in the sand. You know, like with Max Egan, you've got to go back to Ken O'Keefe and the world citizen sovereignty scam you know, he sold Ken O'Keefe out under the bus and said oh I'm an innocent victim again all his mates rallied round him ganged up on Ken O'Keefe as far as I'm concerned they were both guilty as one another you know uh, it's just that I don't think Ken O'Keefe anticipated just how sneaky Max Egan was so um, you've got the Ken O'Keefe pyramid scam and then you've got him at the same time, 2016-17, uh, defending um, Zen Gardner over his cult membership and activities and concealment of them. And you also have to remember too that Max Egan has been a prominent speaker at the Freedom Summits that um, Adrian Brannock uh, Mark McMurtry, uh, Mark Darwin, all of these people were involved with right from back in, what, 2014-15 when it all first started up. 
and all of that thing around Freedom Summits. You can all uh, already go, still go, to Mark Darwin's YouTube channel and see the Freedom Summit videos with Max Sieg and Mark McMurtry. You won't see the one of Adrian Brennock because that, I think, is part of why he signed those agreements to not speak publicly. Uh, he appeared, apparently, this is an allegation, I have no evidence of this, he appeared as an anonymous person, as Mr X, and claimed he was a barrister. Uh, that's what I've heard, as I said, it's unconfirmed. But uh, Max Egan has also been heavily involved with the Freedom Summits here in Australia right from its inception. He's been involved in past scams. And uh, if you go to the... He was supposed to go to the Anarchapolco this year, but he broke his foot. He's also been involved with that with um, Jeff Berwick, yeah, of Dollar Vigilante. Again, these are all cryptocurrency, set up sovereignty, um, essentially trying to find a legal way to avoid paying tax. It is, that is the basic foundation of all of them. Find a legal way to not pay tax. And they all think they've found a way to do it. And they think they've found the answer. But then you also look at the long trail of failed uh, all over the world. How many of them actually end up in jail? Because guess what? You thought you had it all figured out, but you didn't. And this has happened time and time and time again. And it's consistent. And this is exactly what has gone on at NICAP on Mingenball. They think they've got it all figured out and that it cannot come undone. Well, it can and it will and people will go to jail over it. Like they did with the Bellingen community that Mark Darwin and Adrian Brannock were involved with. There were people that were at the lower level of involvement that actually went to jail. They were the scapegoat and they just moved on and reformatted and became Buller Buller. So don't think that people haven't gone to jail over these failed enterprises they have. And there will be people in future that will still go to jail. Some of them will be shown to be complicit, that they've been given the opportunity to set the record straight, and they haven't. Those that have promoted it, like Pete Evans, he's got it plastered all over his website. He is very, very supportive of it. So the fact that it has been spearheaded by a bankrupt is something he should actually put the brakes on, advise people publicly and say, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I got conned again, you know, I didn't know he was bankrupt. Even though I paid someone else to check it all out, you know, what, what excuses is he going to come up with? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what advice you get from anybody. We are adults and we make our own choices. Pete Evans has made his own choice, as has Max Egan. They have both chosen to ignore the evidence put before them. They've both been given the chance. And there is evidence that they've been given the chance now. And so you can't turn around and say, oh, well, I didn't know, you know, this is all news to me. No, it's not. It's actually old news to both of them. They have known for some time and have refused, even from friends of theirs. They've refused to change the narrative they support and promote. So I'm going to leave it at that today and catch you next time.